All right. Good morning. Good morning. I am so sorry. I I uh, did not connect my um my camera. I thought my camera was connected. It wasn't connected at all. So we're gonna pray. We're gonna start this morning off. It's uh, pretty funny. Well, it's funny to me. How about that? Um, but let's pray. Let's let's get into the presence of God this morning. And um, let me just post my. I know I normally post my notes for those who. Pray with me in the morning time. And let's pray together. Let's seek God together this morning. He is so good. The Lord is so good. The Lord is so kind. The Lord is so uh, compassionate. He is awesome. Let's pray. Amen. God is good. Hallelujah. 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 God is so good. This uh this time of prayer has been uh it's been a journey. It's been it's been a it has definitely been a journey, I'll tell you that. And um I am grateful for for what God has done, what God is doing in our midst. Uh and so we're gonna pray right now. We're gonna seek God. We're going to continue to press into the Lord. And I want to encourage you guys to pray no matter what you're going through. No matter what you're fighting. No matter how you feel. No matter what's going on in your soul. Continue to pray. Continue to seek the Lord. Continue to cry out to God. Um, until you've seen all that God has for you. And the Lord is good. He loves us. He cares for us. He is faithful and he answers prayers. The Lord answers prayers. And so let's pray this morning. Let's seek the Lord uh, this morning. Let's cry out to God this morning. Let's go before his throne with thanksgiving. Go before his throne with, with praise. And go before the throne of God knowing that our Father hears us and so let's pray father god i just come before you lord god and i just thank you lord god and i praise you lord god this morning lord you are worthy of all the glory good morning Corey. you're worthy of all the honor lord god this morning lord god you know it was a rough start for me this morning but i'm happy that i'm here i'm happy i am in your presence i'm happy that i get to seek your face i'm happy that i get to call on your great name lord god and so lord god this morning i'm i'm here father god and i ask lord god that uh, you would just uh cleanse our hearts lord god father god today lord god more than ever lord god we need you lord god we need you today more than we need needed you yesterday lord god this moment we're in your presence lord god it's we need you father god we need you lord god i, I need you lord god I need you more than anything, oh, Father God. This morning, Lord God, I'm, I'm asking for your grace, Lord God, this morning. I'm asking, Lord God, for you, Lord God. I, I need you, Lord Jesus, oh, Father God. Father God, this morning, Lord God, I come before you, Lord God, and I pray, Lord God, that you would, you would touch us, Lord God. You would draw us close to you, Lord God. Oh, God, I thank you, Lord God, for all that you've done, Lord God. Lord, you're worthy, Lord God. You're worthy of the honor. You're worthy of the praise. You're worthy of the glory, Lord God. Lord God, I'm here, Lord God, this morning. We're here, Lord God. We're here, Lord God, to lean on you. We're here, Lord God, to draw strength from you. We are here this morning, Lord God, to look to you, Lord God, in the quietness of our soul, Lord God, even in our pain, our, our discomfort, our disorientation, Lord God. We are here, Lord. I'm here, Lord God. And we're, we're sitting at your feet, Lord God. God, we need an encounter with you, Lord. We need an encounter with your word this morning. We need an encounter with your truth. Oh, God. Would you meet with us, Lord God, this morning? 
this morning, would you meet with your children? Would you meet with your servants, Lord God? Lord God, you promised, Lord God, in James chapter 4, verse 8, if we come near to you, you will draw near to us. You will come. You will meet with us, Lord God. And today, Lord God, we want you to visit with us. Today, we want, Lord God, to encounter you. <coughs> today, we want to walk with you. Today, oh, Father God, we want to be with you, Lord God. Oh, God, you're worthy, Lord God. You're worthy of all the glory. You're worthy of all the honor. You're worthy of all the praise. Mm. Lord God, I lift your name on high, Lord God, this morning, Lord God. You're worthy, Lord God, to be lifted up. Lord, we magnify you, Lord God, this morning, Lord God. And we praise your holy name, Lord God. May we adore you. May we seek you. May we cry out to you. Lord, I'm grateful, Lord God, for what you've done. I'm grateful, Lord God, for, for, for your presence. I'm grateful for your name. I'm grateful, hallelujah. I'm, I'm grateful for the, the people you've put in my life, the people who, who even call me to pray, Lord God. I'm, I'm thankful, Lord God, for your, your goodness, Lord God, towards me. I'm thank you for your goodness towards our church. I'm thank you for your goodness, Lord God, in, in revealing things to me, Lord God. Lord God, I, I pray, Lord God, forgive me, Lord God, for, for acting like a baby. Forgive me, Lord God, for when you show me things that need to get changed, Lord God, and I pout, Lord God, and I whine, and I complain, Lord God, about things, Lord God. Lord God, this morning, Lord God, I, I've come, Lord God, to lay, lay all everything at your feet, success and failure, Lord God, at your feet. Lord God, I lay everything at your uh, uh, feet, Lord God, broken dreams, Lord God, and dreams that I, I wish to uh, come forth, Lord God, all of this. Lord God, I, I lay at your feet, Lord God, this morning. I take the weight, Lord God, and I and I cry out to you, Lord God. And so, Lord God, I pray for, I pray, Lord God, that my eyes, our eyes, Lord God, will not, not look on men, will not look on, on just simple results, but our eyes will just look to you, Lord God. Lord God, may we look to you, Lord God. May, we, may it be, Lord God, that our eyes will be kept on the King of glory. Lord God, may we not, may we not look at the desert, desert, Lord God, we've been wandering, Lord God, in, in the sand, Lord God, in the dryness, Lord God, rather, let us look to you, Lord God, the king who's on the throne, the king who is with us in the desert, the king who is with us, Lord God, I, Father God, I, I thank you, Lord God, and I praise you, Lord, Lord God, this morning, hallelujah, good morning, Maria, Hallelujah. Today, Lord God. Today, Lord God, we look to you, O King. I look to you. I look to you. I, I understand. I understand, Lord God. And I'm I'm grateful. Lord God, I pray that, Lord God, when you allow us to go through desert experiences, Lord God, that we would learn from them, that we would grow in them that our hearts will not become bitter, that our hearts may not uh, grumble as the people of Israel did <coughs> and was killed, but rather, Lord God, we would be refined by the desert. We will be humbled in the desert. We will learn to trust you in the desert. We will wait on a word of the Lord in the desert. Lord God, I come before you, Lord God, and I praise you, Lord God, and I thank you you know, sometimes in life you go through a desert experience. A desert experience is, um, some, sometimes desert experiences come from God, right? The people of Israel was set free from Egypt. And when they were set free from Egypt, they ended up in the desert. The desert is not a pleasant pr place. The desert is a place where God allows you to have needs and wants that can only be fulfilled by him. You know, just think about the people of Israel. They're walking through the desert. They're hungry. They, they need food and they need water, right? And they need shelter. So in the desert, though, what does God do? Because we, we talk about the desert experience and um, we talk about it as a bad thing. But I want you to understand in the desert, God was a pillar of cloud by day and fire by night. So they needed 
the, the desert reaches temperatures well over 100 degrees. It's my understanding. And so when God came as a pillar of cloud, I want you to understand the grace of God. That cooled the people of Israel as they walked. He didn't allow the sun to smite them or the, the sun to kill them or to scorch them so that they were walking in the desert and it was unbearable. He was a pillar of cloud. Then the temperatures at night in the desert drops um, to very freezing cold uh, weather. So it's really, really extreme weathers. And, and how did God appeared for them? He appeared as a pillar of fire. So, so think about this. This is, a, this is millions of people. And so he's, he's their shade during the day. And he's their warmth during the night. And then the desert experience is an experience in which God allows you, right? Pay attention to this. To, f to have needs, wants, desires, aspirations. What did they want? Food, clothing, a home. And what did God do? He didn't give it to them where they had it. They could run to it. Every day they had to trust God for every meal. He rained down manna from the sky. You guys know the story. And when they were hungry, everything came to them at a word. You know, this is the word of the Lord. Moses would say, tomorrow you're going to have manna. They wanted meat. God, you, you're going to get meat. And God sends quail. And, and you guys know the story. And then good morning, uh, Angelo. He's, he's watching on Facebook too as well. And so um, uh, this morning, I, and so we see, we see, um, we see that, that he, he rains down food and then they're thirsty and they actually found this rock. It, it's so awesome. It's split in half. And so God tells uh, Moses to strike the rock and water burst forth. And it's enough water to fuel, um, fuel millions of people. So in the desert, it's a time where God teaches you to rely on him. But it is also a time where God deals with your pride and your arrogance and your self-sufficiency. It's a time where God deals with you thinking you know all things. You know what's better. And so the desert experience is a difficult experience because you, you're encountering God, but you're also encountering you through the discomfort and through the pain and through the agitation of not having what you want when you want it, whenever you want it, you, there's this wrestling inside of you and you're, and you're fighting and you, you want things that, um, you want things right away. You want, you know, you want relief from the pain. You want relief from the stress. You want relief from what's going on in life. And, um, in the desert experience, it's a time where you learn to trust God, but it's also a time where God is dealing with your heart. He's removing the things inside of your life that will keep you from your promised land. So I want you to understand God leading them through the desert experience. And I'm, I'm talking about from the emotional soul place. I'm not talking about just, just leaving one, you know, uh, Egypt and going into Canaan. I'm talking about what was happening on the inside of these people. They grumbled, they complained, they wanted to worship another God. They wanted to give up. Like those things were inside of the people of Israel before they left Egypt. The desert just, ex just revealed what was on the inside. I don't know if that uh, makes sense to you guys. I hope it does. But the desert experience revealed what was truly happening on them. They had a propensity to give up. They had a propensity to look somewhere else and not look to God. This was in the hearts of the people, even after all of the great miracle signs and wonders that God um, had performed. And so um, sometimes we, sometimes we uh, do, uh, sometimes we don't know what's really going on on the inside until we've been tested, until we've been tried, until we have been prodded, until we have been pushed uh, outside of our comfort zones and outside of our limits until we experience great failure, um, until we experience sometimes even great um, success could be a test. And so when we experience those things, they allow us, they allow us to, to see what's happening inside of us, what's happening in our hearts, what's happening in our minds, what's happening in our spirits. And so, um, when those things are revealed, your only recourse 
when God does these things in your life is humility. Is humility. What does humility look like? God, I was wrong. God, I, I thought I could do it by myself. God, I um God, I I am I'm battling with my emotions. God, I want to give up. God, I don't like where I am and I wish I was someplace else. God, I I I need help and I don't know how to get help. God, I and and the desert experiences push you to a place where you learn you learn how to stick your hand up to God and ask for help. But it's also a place where you learn to uh, stick your hand out to those who are around you and ask for, for help. And there are people that God has put in your life during the desert experience because God knows if he were to leave you completely alone, you would be broken. And there's people that God put in your life during the desert experience where they can help you. Help you to get to where you needed to go. You know, Moses, um, although he, you know, it was for fear, but God did give him his brother Aaron. And then God gave him Joshua, a man who loved the Lord and who, who stood at the tent with Moses and learned from Moses. And so uh, God does these things. And so I want to I wanna encourage you this morning. I want to encourage you this morning to trust God in your desert experience. Um, to trust God in your desert experience. And I want to encourage you to humble yourself and ask for the help that you need. Ask for, ask God to be there for you. Ask God to deal with what's really going on on the inside of your heart. This is what I, I want to encourage you with this morning. And so I don't know about you, but I've, I've been, I, um, I've been in a desert experience and, and quite frankly, I was in the desert and, and unaware of the desert. Um, th that's the funny part about being in the desert. Sometimes we are, we've been in the desert so long that we don't even know that we're in the desert. If that makes sense. We don't even know that we are, we're there in the, in the desert. So this morning we're going to pray prayers of humility. And we're going to pray prayers of coming to God and asking for what we need, like the people of Israel. Uh, it says this in the scriptures. I got, my, I got my Bible here. Let me just pull it out. And when you see me looking down, it's either I'm looking at my Bible, I'm looking at my smartphone or, or my phone. Sometimes it's easier to, to type, type. But it says in Deuteronomy... Um, and I want to read this scripture to you because it's it's very important. This is how you survive your desert, uh, uh, your desert experience, uh, your desert experience. And I want to read this to you right now. This is how you how you survive the desert. Amen. Maybe this is what I should call this this uh, this this uh, prayer today. How to survive the desert. And I want to read this to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says this. And listen to listen to what God says. This is Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 3. We're going to start there. It says, so he humbled you. And allowed you to hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. So think about this. I want you to, I want you to hear this. And let me just grab my Bible in my hands. I want, I want to read this one more time. This is Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna change the name of this broadcast to "Surviving the Desert." How about that? Hallelujah! Even though we got, <laughs> even though we got time, but I, I'm a, I'm gonna change this broadcast to "Surviving the Desert." I, I like that. Surviving, surviving the desert. 
That's what I like. I want to change it. I'll change it on Facebook later. And so, um, hallelujah. God is so good. And so I want to read this one more time. I, and I want you to really understand this. I want you to get this. I want to read this one more time. If you're with me, I want to read it one more time right now. Right now, I want to I want to read this to, right now. I want to read this one more time. Hallelujah! And I want you to hear these words because this is powerful. If you if you can get what I'm saying, it's gonna encourage you. It's gonna lift you up. It's gonna cause you to to um, grow in your faith. It's gonna cause you to learn what God is doing with you in the season. Let me read it one more time. It says this: So He humbled you and allowed you to hunger. And fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Your garments did not wear out on you, nor did your foot swell these forty years. You should know in your heart that as a man chastens his son, so the Lord God chastens you. Oh, my goodness. Oof. Oh man. So I want you to think about that. The the words say, the word of God says, so he humbled you in the desert. He caused you, he humbled you. And he allowed you to be hungry. I want you to hear that. He allowed you to be hungry and fed you with manna which you did not know. He allowed them to experience hunger. It it wasn't by accident that every day they had to come to God and ask God for bread and ask God for water and ask God. This was a humbling. It, it was a humbling experience. Why? There was a self-sufficiency inside of the people of Israel. They thought they could do it all on their own. They thought that they were, you know, I'm, you know, I'm the man, I'm the man, I'm the man, I'm the man. They, they thought that they could, they could handle life by themselves. And so, and so God humbled them and caused them to have to rely on them daily. And then it says this, their clothes did not wear out, right? Their feet did not swell, right? They're walking in a desert for 40 years, but he didn't allow the desert to destroy them. Like they didn't leave the desert with arthritis. They didn't leave the desert with, with joint conditions and bad, you know, bad body conditions after walking, you know, on a consistent basis for 40 years. No, instead, um, they left, um, they, they were still healthy. But then at the end of, of, of this passage, it uses the word chasten. That word chasten is, um, is the word discipline. In the Greek, it's my understanding that it means for uh, not, a, not only to discipline you, but it also means um, it also means to where am I? It also means it's the same word for training up a child, training a child. So the discipline of the Lord is training. The discipline of the Lord is to train, to train the child to what? Obey, train the child to do what the parent says. Those of you who are parents and you can understand this analogy and it's to correct behaviors that um, are destructive behaviors that can cause, you know, long term negative effects in the child's life. Like it, it was it was truly a way in which God was disciplining them. And and it's hard for us to think about that. But God knows the type of discipline that we need in order to be the man and woman of God that he's called us to be. And we would never choose a path of discipline. I want you, and, and this is what I want you to understand. Like the discipline that these the people of Israel needed was because there were things in their heart. And we know there were things in their heart that was not right because when Moses went up into the temple, I mean, excuse me, in, went up into the presence of God, while he's there getting revelation and he's getting the, the Ten Commandments, the people... Uh, go to Aaron, the priest, and they ask him to build a golden calf. You guys know the story. So Aaron builds, he, Aaron asks for all the jewelry. He builds a calf, and then they start playing the harlot, the Bible says. And this was more than just bowing down and and worshiping the, the calf. When you study it in depth, there, were, there was some sexual things happening. There were some things that were happening there. I mean, the people went wild and crazy. And so when Moses left, again, this was the test. When the leader was not there, what would the people of God do? How would they live their life? Would they still see God? Would they still serve the Lord? Would they still trust God? And for them, they went crazy. Even Aaron forsook his 
a priestly um, order and became this this maker of an idol and then he became a priest to a golden calf it's, it's insane when you read the stories like wow like really like god is feeding them god is doing all these things but that's us that's us we're prone to wander we're prone to look elsewhere we're pro we're prone to give our hearts to things that we shouldn't and so the lord um the lord has to bring us through these roads that we would never travel on our own to deal with the issues of our heart and to cause us to be humble and so this morning we, we're praying and, and we're, we're surviving the desert this morning this is what we're doing we're surviving the desert this morning we're surviving the the desert we're surviving the difficulties. We're so, we're so, um, we're going to be praying about that. And so let's pray prayers of humility this morning. What is prayers of humility? Lord God, I was wrong. Lord God, I need you. Lord God, I need help. Lord God, I need you to guide me. Lord God, I need you to lead me. And Lord God, I need you to walk with me. And let's pray. Let's pray. And this morning, if, if this fits you, I don't know if it fits you, if it's, you know, if you can connect with this or not. But maybe you need, you need to go back to full surrender. Father God, I come before you, Lord God, this morning, Lord Jesus, and I thank you, Lord God. I praise you, Lord God, this morning, Lord God. You are worthy of all the glory. You are worthy of all the honor. You are worthy of all the praise, Lord God. Hallelujah. Lord, you are faithful, God. And this morning, Lord God, we come, Lord God, in repentance, Lord God. We come with, with heavy hearts. We understand, Lord God, that you've allowed trials. You've allowed tribulation. You've allowed pain. You've allowed things to come into our soul, Lord God, in order that you would humble us, in order that you would train us, in order that you would get us, Lord God, to look to you. Oh, God, I come before you, Lord God. And I pray in Jesus' name, Lord God. Oh, God, my Father, I pray for your help, Lord God. I pray for your strength. I pray this morning, Lord God, that we would, we would trust you, Lord God. Lord God, forgive us, Lord God, for self-sufficiency. Forgive us for thinking that we are, we can do it on our own. Forgive us, oh, Father God, for thinking, oh, Father God, that, Lord Jesus Christ, um, we have the answers. Forgive us for thinking, oh, Father God, that we can, we can walk this life, Lord God, on our own, Lord God. Lord God, this morning, we come, Lord God, in full surrender. We come in full surrender to you. Good morning. Um, good morning, Jasmine. We, good morning, Mom. We come in full surrender to you. We surrender our will. We surrender our hearts. We surrender our desires. We, we surrender, Lord God, uh, our aspirations, Lord God. Lord God, forgive us for our pride. Forgive us for thinking that we could do things on our own. Forgive us for thinking, Lord God, that we, we can carry the weight of life on our own. Lord God, this morning, we're coming, Lord God, to you, Lord God, and we're asking, Lord God, for your strength. We're asking, Lord God, for your revival. We're, we're asking, Lord God, for you to lift us up, Lord God. Today, we take our eyes off of ourselves, Lord God. Today, we, we receive the rod of correction, Lord God. We receive the chastisement of the Lord. We receive, Lord God, the rebuke of the Lord. Today, we come, Lord God, un under you, Lord God, not resisting the correction. Instead, oh, Father God, we pray that all that you want to accomplish in our hearts will take place. All that you want to accomplish in our lives will take place. Lord God, we come to you in humility. We come to you uh, uh, humbly asking, Lord God, for your hand of mercy, asking for your grace this morning. Lord God, we, we, we come to you, Lord God, and we ask you, Lord God, that you, Lord God, will do, Lord God, uh, a work in us, Lord God. This morning, Lord God, we come, Lord God, by faith, Lord God, and we're saying, Lord God, we need you, Lord God. We're saying, Lord God, we 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 repent, Lord God. We're saying, Lord God, today we're choosing to look to you. Today we're choosing to do things differently. Today, Lord God, we're choosing not to be stubborn. Today we're not we're choosing not to um mm. wow. I understand. Today we're looking to you, Lord. O King. 
O King, live forever, Lord Jesus. Lord, I thank you, Lord. And I praise you, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. I thank you, Father God. Lord God, I, I pray, Lord God, this morning, Lord, forgive me for my pride. Forgive me for arrogance, Lord God. Forgive me for thinking I know better, Lord God. And I didn't. I didn't know better, Lord. And so, Lord God, I'm here, Lord God, today. I thank you, Father God. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. I, I'm, pray, I'm praying this morning. I, I'm going to tell on myself. I'm praying this morning, and it's nothing embarrassing. And the God, and as like I said, we're, we're praying that the theme for this morning is surviving the desert, surviving the desert. I'm praying this morning, and the Lord is showing me; He's bringing back to my mind things that um, that I wrestled with, that things that I thought that I thought was good, and they were good, but just not the good for right now. They were the good, but they were not the good for the moment. They, they, oh man. I am, I am, my eyes are open to things and I'm like, Lord, wow, I, I didn't see this. I, I didn't see it. And so it's a beautiful thing when God brings uh, truth to your life and uh, God allows you to uh, uh, see things that you didn't see before. You know, God can't move past your, I always tell people God can't move past your obedience um, and but what I really mean when I say this, God can't move past your humility. Like God, God will wait for you, wait for you to be ready to listen to him, if that makes sense. The Lord will wait for you to be ready to um, hear what he has to say. And um, we determine how long we're in the desert. It's, it's not God. This is. This is the truth. This is the hard truth. We determine how long we remain in the place of correction. And there's a story in the Bible of this king. He was the most wicked king in the uh, the Bible. To me, he was the most wicked king. I think he did more evil than everybody else in the scripture. I'm, um, and I wanna um, I wanna read this the scripture uh, scripture to you. And I want to read read about his rebellion because um, I, when I read this, I was so surprised at how God, um, uh, responded to him. And I want to read this to you this morning. And let me just find it right now. And I want to read the scripture to you this morning because it, it is. Um, I want to read this to you. Let me read it to you. Hallelujah. And it's found in Kings. Let me just see. And it's a very powerful story. Um, it's a it's a story of humility. And in this story, um, if you guys don't know, uh, King Manasseh was a wicked king. I believe his name was King Manasseh. His, um, he was a very wicked, evil king. And he did more, more evil than everyone else in the sight of God. I, I don't know if you guys know the story. And so he, he did what was detestable in God's sight. I mean, I mean, this guy did evil. He did wickedness in the eyes of God. And... Um, as he's doing this wickedness, uh, he gets captured. He gets captured by another king, and they they put a, a hook in his nose, and they lock him up in a in a cage. It's really really bad. I mean, he does he does real real evil in the eyes of God. And then when when he does this, the Bible says that he is in the temple of the Lord, and he repent. Excuse me, not in the temple. He's in this place of 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 the prison. And he repents before God. This is Manasseh. And he was 12 years old when he, when he took the reign of God. And he did evil in the eyes of the Lord. But then he repents. He repents. He gets captured by a foreign enemy. And I, read, and I want to read this. I want to read this to you right now. 
It says this, and the Lord spoke to Manasseh. This is uh, 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 33, verse 10, and then we're going to pray. And the Lord spoke to Manasseh and his people, but they would not listen. Therefore the Lord brought upon them the captains of the army of the king of Assyria, who took Manasseh with hooks, bound him with bronze f um, fetters, and carried him off to Babylon. Now when he was in affliction, um, he implored the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his father and prayed to him. And he received his entry and heard his supplication and brought him back to Jerusalem into the kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord was God. And after this, he built a wall outside the city of David on the west side of Gihon in the valley as far as the entrance of the fish case. And it, and it enclosed all fell. So I want you to read this story. If, if you ever get a chance, read Second Chronicles chapter 33. Manasseh was a wicked king. He did more evil than all the other kings. And as he's praying to God, he's taken away and he's held in captivity. And when he's taken away and he's held in captivity, he prays in prison. I want you to get this. He's in the prison system. He's taken in by a foreign, um, foreign enemy. And when God hears his heart, God moves this army. This army came to take this king as prisoner and release him. And I'm reading in scripture. I don't even know if you know this. King Ahab. Ahab was the most wickedest king. And he repents and he, he, he cries out to God. And God says, okay, this is not going to happen with you. This is going to happen with your, um, thank you. This is going to um, happen. And, and I, I noticed something in scripture. Repentance always moves the heart of God and repentance removes you from the desert. I, I don't know if you're catching that. Repentance moves the heart of God and repentance moves you from the desert. So let's pray this morning. We're going to pray. We're going to cry out to God. We're going to, we're going to seek the Lord this morning and, and we're going to, um, come to God with humility. And I don't know about you. I don't know what you're um, doing. I don't know what you're, you're battling this morning. I don't know um, what you're going through this morning, but I want us to pray. And if there's an area in your life in which God has been speaking to you about where he's been calling you to surrender, where he's been calling you to turn your heart towards him, where he's calling you to let go of your pride and your way of doing things in your way of understanding I want you to repent. Let's pray. Father God, I come before you, Lord God, and I thank you, Lord God, and I praise you, Lord God. You are worthy, Lord God, of all the glory. You are worthy of all the honor. You are worthy of all the praise, Lord God. This morning, uh, we've come, Lord God, to surrender to you, Lord God. We, we've seen in Scripture, Lord God, that you bring us through dry places so that we can learn, so that we can grow. You allow us, oh, Father God, to have things slip out of our hands so that we can grow. You allow us, oh, Father God, to, to be put between a rock and a hard place, Lord God, so that we can grow. This morning, Lord God, we come before you, Lord God, with hearts ready to hear, ready to receive, ready, Lord God, to be restored. As you restored Manasseh, Lord God, when he cried out to you, Lord God, you said you heard his entry, you heard his plea, you heard his cry this morning, Lord God. We come before you, Lord God. We cry out to you. We cry out to you for victory. We cry out to you for understanding. We cry out to you for wisdom. We cry out to you to have an open mind. Lord God, this morning we cry out to you to have an open heart. Lord God, today, oh Father God, we come before you, Lord God. Oh God, Lord Jesus, you are so worthy, Lord God. You are so worthy, Lord God, of all the glory. You are so worthy of all the honor. Would you do for Manasseh, Lord God, what you, what you did for Manasseh, would you do for us, Lord God? Lord God, today, Lord God, we turn our hearts to you. This morning, Lord God, we come in full surrender, willing to learn whatever you would teach us, willing to learn whatever you would have us uh, to know, willing to go through whatever you would have us to go. Today, Lord God, would you do for us, Lord God, as you did for Manasseh? Would you see us in our imprisoned state? Would you see us in our state of brokenness, Lord God, this morning? And this morning we're coming and we're asking, oh, Father God, 
In Jesus' name, Lord God, we're asking you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you would restore us, that you would lift us up, that you would uh, build us up, that you, oh Father God, will bring us back to the place, Lord God, in which, Lord God, we are walking in full surrender to you, Lord God. We thank you. We thank you for your correction, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for restoring, Lord God. Today, today, oh Father God, we've come, Lord God. Lord God, we've come to learn. Lord God, we're willing to learn what we were unwilling to learn in the season of the desert, Lord God. We're willing to learn, oh Father God, what we what we shut our ears off to, Lord God, in this season. Lord God, today, we're willing to see, Lord God, what we were unable to see before. Today, oh Father God, we're willing to see and understand, Lord God, and to do, Lord God, what we were unwilling to do in seasons before. Today, oh Father God, we don't come with a resistant heart, a heart to fight against you, a heart to war against you, a heart, Lord God, and Father God, forgive us, Lord God, for we didn't even understand that when, Lord God, we, we resisted you, resisted wisdom, resist, resisted good counsel, we were fighting against you. Lord God, today we come in humility. We come in humility this morning, Lord God. We come humbly asking, Lord God, asking for your help, asking for your grace, asking for your mercy, Lord God. Oh God, oh God, today, today we give up our rights to lead our lives. Today we give up the right to have the final say. Today we give up our right to, to do what we want, when we want, how we want. Today, oh Father God, we come in full humility, Lord God, and we cry out to you, Lord God. Today, Lord God, may today be the day, Lord God, of our release, Lord God. May today be the day of our release from our desert, Lord God, our release from pain, our, our, our release from hurts, our release, Lord God, from, from misunderstandings, Lord God, our, our release, Lord God, from, from not uh, waiting on you, not uh, for rushing, Lord God, for putting our, our, our two feet, Lord God, forward and rushing into things you've not called us a Russian to, Lord God. May today be the day, Lord God, where there's a great turnaround, there's a great reversal, Lord God. You always respond to brokenness. You always respond to your children when they humble themselves. You never resist the humble. You said in your word, you give grace to the humble, but you resist the prideful, Lord God. You said, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and in due time, he will lift you up. So today, Lord God, today, Lord God, we I release no God, all that I've taken control over. This, which, this is what I want you to pray right now. You're praying that you would release all that you have taken control over in your life. That's what you're praying. You're praying and anything that you have taken control over where God should be leading you. And you've taken that, that reign. You've taken that place. You've sat in that, that, that place of... Uh, control that belongs to the king today i want you to give it back i want you to give back the reins to the king you know the reins the horse reins when they're holding on to the horse to, to ride the horse no you're going to give that to the to the rain in modern day language i want you to 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 give the steering wheel over when that song jesus take the wheel came out it was such a powerful song everybody loved that song because the message was jesus take control jesus have your way and even though i'm not into country or country songs or or singers who are not necessarily singing gospel music but the words were powerful because the words said jesus the t giving the wheel to god was i give up i give up my right to lead i give up my 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 right to set the direction i give up my right to navigate i am coming under the navigate navigation of god i'm coming under the authority of god I am sitting in the passenger seat and I'm allowing God to lead. I once had a dream and we're going to pray. And the Lord is, wow, the Lord is really speaking to me this morning. I had a dream in which I was driving this red, it looked like a, a Corvette car. And Jesus was sitting in the passenger seat. And I'm like, okay, Jesus is with me. But I was driving off road. And I was hitting trees and bushes and I couldn't see where I was going. 
And I'm driving, I'm driving, I'm driving, I'm driving. And what God was trying to show me, I was sitting in the wrong seat. Jesus was supposed to be driving the car. And sometimes that's the way we, we, we are. We, we have such independent natures from God is that we want to, we think God has to be with us as we make decisions. Like as long as God is with me, no, God needs to lead. He, he just doesn't need to be present in your life. He needs to have the full authority. God help us. <laughs> so this morning, we're going to pray and you're going to pray. And you're going to ask God and you're going to, you're praying right now. Your prayers this morning is whatever you have taken control, you're going to let God, um, uh, take that control again. You're going to pr- um, you're going to cry out to God for the, for him. Let's pray. Let's pray. This is your prayer this morning. Your prayer is whatever you have taken control. This is where you need to hear from God. You are praying right now. God, I give up control. I have taken the lead in this. I did not listen to your counsel in this. I have put these things uh, um, in this and you're going to pray. That's what you're praying this morning. That's what you're stepping into this morning. This is what we're pressing into this morning. This is what we're praying. Lord God, I come before you, Lord God. And I thank you and I praise you, Lord God. And I pray for your forgiveness. I pray, Lord God, that you would forgive us for taking control, for living in the driver's seat when you should be driving, for not allowing you to have the final say for running on our own wisdom and our own intuition and our own abilities, Lord God, for thinking that we know better. I ask that you would forgive us, Lord. Forgive us for pride. Forgive us for arrogance. Forgive us, Lord God, for not listening to wise counsel. Forgive us for not listening to those who try to give us direction, who try to help us, Lord God, to see things that we were unwilling to see. Lord God, this morning we come in your presence, Lord God, and we understand, Lord God, that it is not our place to be in the driver's seat of our life. It is not our place to lead our own lives. We come to you, Lord God, this morning, and we understand, Lord God, and I give up the keys, Lord God, to the car. Lord God, we we give up the keys. We give the keys. We give up the registration, Lord God. We, we, we give up ownership of the vehicle, Lord God. We don't even want the keys. We only want to get in the car when you open the door for us, Lord God. We only want to sit down in the passenger seat when you say it's time to go, as you did with the people of Israel. You led them. You led them. You, you arose. The cloud moved, and they moved. Their covering moved. Their protection moved. Their shelter moved, and then they moved. And when you rested in an area, then they rested. Oh, God. God, I'm praying you may break, Lord God, the independent nature that we have, Lord God. You may break our our independence, Lord God, our, our independence, oh, Father God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm praying, Lord God, that you may break, Lord God, in us, Lord God, the the, the desire, Lord God, to just want to do things on our own, Lord God. Today's the day, Lord God. Today's the day we, where we give up, Lord God. Today's a different Independence Day, Lord God. It's it's not an Independence Day where we're we're freed from. No, we're 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 it's an Independence Day where we're freed to. We're free to obey. We're free to submit. We're free to listen. We're free to wait on you. We're free to hear from you. Lord God, this morning, Lord God, I surrender my rights. That's right, mom. I surrender my control. I surrender, Lord God, for for myself, for wanting to do what I want, for thinking that I know better, Lord God. This morning, Lord God, we've come in humility and in brokenness, Lord God, and we're asking you, Lord God, today, that you would take the wheel, that you would take the leadership life, Lord God. Oh my goodness. Lord, forgive us for wanting to be the husband in the relationship when you call us the bride of Christ.
Forgive us for wanting to be the husband in the relationship when you said the church is the bride. Forgive us for wanting to take leadership when you said Christ is the head. Father God, forgive us for stepping out of our place. Forgive us for stepping out, Lord God, of our place to be a submissive bride to you, Lord God. Oh God, today, Lord God, today, Lord God, we come back, Lord God, to the place of surrender. We come back to the place of humility. We come back to the pr- the place, Lord God, of, of letting you lead us, Lord God. Oh Lord, I'm so sorry, Lord God. For not looking to you, Lord God. For not waiting on you. For not resting on you. For resisting you, Lord God. Lord God, today, Lord God, we we come back, Lord God. Willing to go where you tell us to go. Willing to say what you tell us to say. Willing to be still when you want us to be still. Lord God, willing to be active when you want us to be active. Lord God, I realize, Lord God that things could be a lot worse. Even in the desert, there was grace. Even in the desert, there was mercy. Even in the desert, there's a remnant. Lord God, this morning, Lord God, today, Lord Jesus, we return to you, Lord. We return to a a heart posture of humility, of waiting on you, on seeking you, on giving up our our knows, what we know, what we think we know. Lord God, we, we return to the place of a student, Lord God. We return to the place of a little child who needs to be taught by mom and dad. We we return to the place, Lord God, where we we're relying on our Father. Today, Lord God, we abandon our human wisdom. We abandon human intellect we we abandon oh father god today this morning lord god we abandon lord god what we think we know today lord god we surrender lord god today lord god we ask that you would hold our hands lord god today that you we we'd ask lord god as as children need their hands held to cross the street lord god because they can get hit by cars because they're unaware of the dangers around them lord god today we go back to that lord god we go back to saying, God, could you hold our hands? Can you walk us across the street? Can you lead us to where we need to go? Today, Lord God, we come before you, Lord God, and we need you, Father God. Today, Lord God, we surrender, Lord God. We surrender to you, Lord Jesus. Oh God, today we start over. Amen. I want to tell you the truth, uh, a lot of times we don't experience the breakthrough that we need because pride makes you fight in an area to succeed or to get through even if things are not working out. Pride says, just keep pushing. Just keep going even though you know that something deep in your heart is wrong. You you're not you're not seeing the results that you want to see. You're not seeing the things that um, that God promised in your life to take place. And so sometimes, depending on the character, we, we, we become stubborn and we, we become uh, persistent and uh, determined. That's the word. Determined to see things break forward. And so we put more human effort. I'm going to do it. I'm going to push through. And we put you, more human effort and we put more human effort. And then we push and we push and we push. And... It's because there's a fear of starting all over. When you have to start all over in life, it, it's it's a humbling place because you have to start from the beginning. You have to want to relearn things that you are unwilling to learn in the season in which you rejected um, the counsel, good counsel, good truth, and you're brought back to to square one. And it's it's humbling because you fought to get here. But you were really here, but because of pride, you never saw that you were here. You were trying to be here, right here. And so then what God does is he allows us to, you know, keep jumping over here, keep fighting over here. We keep hitting the ceiling right here. We keep hitting. And God is like, they're going to get tired. 
And one year passes, two year passes, three year passes, four year passes, and we're jumping and we're trying to hit, we're trying, we're trying to, we're trying to break through and got, and we don't get it. Like the, the prevention is what's preventing us from going past this to there is God. He, he, he's doing that. It's the Lord. He's the one, but we're fighting. We're like, oh, I'm, you know, I, I need more faith. I need more prayer. I, I need to, I need to fast more. I need to seek God more. I need to do this. But what God was waiting for you to do is to give up and say, wait a minute, are you gonna, you're gonna get off your high horse, and do things my way? Get off your high horse, and learn from me. Um, the Bible says, learn from me. Jesus said, take my yoke, upon from you. Learn from me. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Oh man, as much as God is a father, he's a teacher. God is your teacher. He's a teacher. A good dad is a teacher. At the end of the day, a good parent teaches their children, right? Like what's the role of the parent? Like, think about it. Let's strip it down. Yes, they got to care for the child and they got to feed the child and put clothes and make sure the child has a good, you know, upbringing. But at the end of the day, a good child, a good father is a teacher. Good morning, Jada. That's what that's what God is. He is He is a teacher. He's a teacher. Hallelujah. And so this morning, this morning, as you come into the presence of God, as you begin to seek the Lord, as you begin to, to come before God, come in humility, come ready to be taught. Ready to be taught what you think you know. Well, ready to be th taught what you think you understand. Man. Ready to listen to people who love you. Ready to grow. Amen. Amen. And so that's what God wants. That's what God wants. So let's drive. Let's drive this point home. Let's make this point uh, so uh, strong. This. Let's make this point so so deep in our souls. I want you to come before God. And this is what you're praying this morning. We, so we prayed for humility. We repented. We've asked God to forgive us for our sins. We've acknowledged when we've taken control off of our um, control from God. And we try to be the one in control. And now, good morning, Victor. We love you, Victor. And this morning, we want to pray. And what you're going to pray is you're going to ask God the, the lessons that you are unwilling to learn in the desert. You're going to tell God you're willing to learn them now. I want you to listen to this. So why do I say that? There were two groups of people in, in the desert. There were the parents and there were the children. The parents, this, and when God led the people of Israel, were unwilling to learn the lessons in the desert. So God delivered them from Egypt with a mighty hand. He caused all these wonderful plagues to come out. They crossed over on dry land on the sea. The, the people grumbled and complained against God. And God allowed bread, manna. Remember, we're surviving the desert. Surviving the desert. Bread came down. He fed them. Um, he split the rock. And water came out and they drank from the rock. And the Bible says in the New Testament, that rock was Christ. And so they're in the desert and God brings them to the promised land. The desert experience was for them to become totally independent of God. But they grumbled. You guys know that they complained against God. God had to send these snakes to bite them. And then Moses had to make this snake on a pole and raise it up. And then every time they looked at the, the what was uh, the snake risen up, they were healed. But when they got to the door, when they got to the door of Canaan, Joshua and Caleb and the other spies, the 10 other spies, they go out into the land and they bring back some of the fruits. The grapes are huge and, and they're big. And Joshua and Caleb says, we could take the land. The people were tall. They were this descendants of, of the Anakin, if you guys know this. They were the descendants of giants. So the Israelites were afraid of them. But during the desert, Joshua, Caleb, and the people of God learned, not all, some of them learned, hey, God is with us. He's going to give us the victory. But the adults, 
in the desert, and I want you to pay attention, they were unwilling to learn to trust God. They were unwilling to learn to do things God's way. And so what happened? God said to them, you know, they complained to God. They said, God, you brought us in the desert to die and our children to die. And you, you're bringing us to fight against the, 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 Canaan, the, the Canaanites, but we're going to die. And God said, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to give you victory. Joshua and Caleb tried to convince them. They wouldn't listen. They wouldn't listen. And so then, you know what happens? God tells the adults, the adults, he says, because you said that your children, um, I, you, you brought me to the desert so that we would die and our children would die. You weren't going to die, but your children will go into the promised land. And so what God did was he allowed them to wonder for 40 more years. I, I want you to understand the seriousness. He gave them a timestamp for their life. You're only going to live for 40 more years. Could you imagine that? It, it wasn't just one. Like when we think about it, it wasn't just wandering the desert for 40 more years. He limited the life expectancy of every adult person in the people of Israel to 40 more years. No matter how old they were. If they had children at 30, right? 40 more years will be what? 70, right? If they had children at, at um, 20 years old, if they got married young, 40 more years would be 60. He limited their life. And he did not allow them to obtain that which he promised them. But he gave, he allowed the children, the kids, to come into the promised land. This is, this is a heavy word. So when we're praying right now, what we're praying is this morning, the next, the next prayer we're praying to surviving the desert, you're going to ask God, you're going to say, God, whatever I was unwilling to learn in my desert experience, I'm willing to learn now. That's what you're praying. Whatever I was unwilling to learn, I'm willing to learn right now. And so let's pray this prayer. Let's pray. Let's pray. In other words, you're saying, God, I'm willing to even go back to, to, to square zero. I'm, 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 I'm willing to go back to the starting point, to the starting block. That's, you, that's true humility. Because then God sees that your eyes are open. And then, believe it or not, you're going to hear from God clearly now. Because God can't speak to a prideful heart. God resists the pride, but it gives grace to the humble. What does God do? He resists the pride, but it gives grace to the humble. So this is what you're praying. Thank you for writing that in the chat room, Angelo. Whatever I was unwilling to learn, I'm willing to learn now. And I want you to cry out to God. This is not one of those prayers where you're praying to God and you just say the line. No, this is where you are coming in complete humility, coming in complete brokenness. You're saying, God, whatever I was unwilling to learn, I'm willing to learn now. Father God, I come before you, Lord God. Lord God, we repent of our, our arrogance, our self-sufficiency, our, our thinking we know better. We repent, Lord God. We give up our intellect, Lord God, by Lord God, in our minds and our heart, we tear up our degrees. We tear up our bachelor's degrees, our master's degrees, our doctorate degrees. Lord God, today, Lord God, we, we tear up, Lord God, um, our expertise in certain areas, Lord God. We, we give them up, Lord God. We, we tear up, Lord God, what we, hold, we held dear, that we saw was a part of our character, that, that, that made us who we, who we thought made us who we are today. Lord God, today I, I lay it all down to be retaught. Lord God, we are willing to learn what we were unwilling to learn in the desert. We are willing to learn what we are. We were unwilling to learn, Lord God, Lord God, when you were disciplining us, Lord God. Oh God, today, Lord Jesus, we forsake. I forsake. I forsake and I let go, Lord God, of arrogance, of pride. I let go of wanting to do things my way, Lord God. I, I come before you, Lord God, with humility. Lord God, wherever our ears have been clogged up, Lord God, and plugged up, Lord God, today we remove the plugs from our eyes. 
Lord God, today, in Jesus' name, Lord God, we ask that you would do for us that you, what you did for the Apostle Paul when you removed the scales from his eyes, when he fasted for three days, Lord God, when you humbled him, when you told him he was wrong, he was wrong for persecuting the church, he was wrong for fighting against the people of God. And I pray, Lord God, now in Jesus' name, Lord God, that you would, you would, you would do a work in us, Lord God. Today, Lord God, we've come to be taught the right way. We've been, we've come, we've come to be taught the way in which you've been trying to get us to see. Lord God, we abandon all, Lord God, all of our human intellect, all of our human wisdom, Lord God, for the wisdom of men is is, is foolishness to God. Hallelujah. And the foolishness of, of God, the scripture says, is wiser than the wisdom of men, Lord God. Lord God, today, Lord God, we humble ourselves. Today, Lord God, we turn, Lord God, we turn, Lord God, we turn back to you, oh God. And we ask, Lord God, we ask, we, we want to succeed, but we don't want to su succeed outside of you. We don't want to, we don't want to succeed outside of your will. Today, Lord God, we, we come broken, Lord God, wanting to see your hand, Lord God, wanting to see you, Lord God, do a work in us, Lord God. So, Father God, today we, we humble ourselves, Lord God. Open our eyes now to the truths that you were trying to teach us, to the lessons that you wanted us to learn. God, Help us, Lord Jesus. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, and we praise you, Lord. You're worthy, Lord God, of all the glory, Lord. You're worthy of all the honor, Lord God. You're worthy of all the praise. Hallelujah. So, surviving the desert. So right now, We've repented. We've asked God to forgive us. We've asked the Lord to teach us the things we were unwilling to learn in the desert. We asked the Lord to deal with us. And so then something else happened in the desert. Before they were able to come into the promised land. And this is what we're doing right now. We're taking a journey through the desert, we're, we're humbling ourselves, we're crying out to God, we are, we're asking God to forgive us, we are repenting for our arrogance, repenting for our pride, we are truly uh, just seeking uh, the Lord this morning. And so we, we come before the Lord right now, and we're going to pray. And then what we're going to do is, we're going to humble ourselves. We are going to humble ourselves. And we are going to prepare our hearts to step into the promised land. Right? And I know um, this is just, I'm just speaking figuratively, figuratively speaking. Um, hallelujah. And so the second generation... Um, before they entered into the promised land, God told the people of Israel to be circumcised. That second generation was not circumcised. You need to understand what circumcision is. I'm, I'm teaching you as we're praying, and I want you to understand this. Sorry for having my head down, but I was looking for the scripture. Um, God tells them to be circumcised. Circumcision was a sign of covenant. It was a sign that the, these people are you are a unique people on the face of the planet. And they are unique people because God has set them apart to be his nation. So when you study scriptures, I won't go into it because it's, it's such a deep theological um, understanding, but I want you to understand, and, and this is the best way that I can explain it. When God chose Israel, he was literally choosing a nation in which he would represent him on the earth so that all humanity will come to know God. They were his peculiar special people. And the sign of the covenant, the, the covenant, 
the promise that God made to be their God and them to be their people was the sign of covenant. And so it would be a constant reminder in the flesh of the people of Israel of God that they didn't belong to themselves. They belong to the Lord. So before God brings them into covenant, I mean, excuse me, into the promised land, before Joshua takes them in and they, they have to battle and, and they have to um, fight and go um, into the land of Canaan and they cross the Jordan, they spy out the land, right? They cross the Jordan and they create these memorial stones. God says they need to come back to covenant. And, and what was circumcision? What is circumcision? Let's, let's think about that. Circumcision is the cutting of the flesh. It is the cutting of the flesh. It's the cutting the way of the flesh. And we know it was symbolic of literally the control of the appetite, that the flesh, the fleshly man, the man that wants to um, live by appetite, you know, on, on desire. And, and Paul says, don't be circumcised in the flesh, right? In Romans, he says, be circumcised where? In the heart. Let, let your heart be circumcised. It's let the things of this world, your flesh, be cut away so you could seek God. And I want to read this to you. It's found in jo um, Joshua. Good morning, Taya. Joshua chapter 5. So it was when, the, when all the kings of the Ammonites who were on the west side of the Jordan and all the kings of the Canaanites who were by the sea heard that the Lord had dried, uh, dried up the waters of the Jordan from before the people of Israel, until we had crossed over, that their hearts melted, and there was no spirit in them any longer because of the children of Israel. And at that time, this is verse 2, the Lord said to Joshua, Make flint knives for yourself, and circumcise the sons of Israel again, the second time. So Joshua made flint knives for himself, and circumcised the sons of Israel at the hill of the foreskins. And this is the reason why Joshua circumcised them. All the people who came out of Egypt who were males, all the males of war had died in the wilderness on the way, um, on the way, all after they had come out of Egypt. For all the people who came out had been circumcised, but all the people born in the wilderness on the way as they came out of Egypt had not been circumcised. For the children of Israel walked, the, walked 40 years in the wilderness till all the people who were men of war who came out of Egypt were consumed because they did not obey the voice of the Lord, to whom the Lord swore that he would not show them the land which the Lord had sworn to their fathers that he would give us a land flowing with milk and honey. Then Joshua circumcised their sons, whom he raised up from their place, for they were uncircumcised because they had not been uncircumcised on the way. And so I want you to understand this. This is very powerful. This, I hope you receive this revelation. Listen to this. This is very powerful. In order for them to possess the land, they had to go back to circumcision. They had to go back to covenant. This cutting of the flesh was saying, we belong to you, God. You sit on the throne, God. You are the Lord over the people of Israel. And, 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 and we are your people. We are the children of your pasture. Hallelujah. And so, and so it's very symbolic of what needs to take place. So God, we've repented. So guess what? Since you repented this morning, you are in position to possess your land. You are in position to possess the Canaan that God has for you. You can now, you can now, with the right heart and right mind, step in. Mm. But before you get in the land, before you get in the land, there might be some things that needs to be cut off. There might be some things in your life that you got to remove. There got to maybe some things in your life that, that needs to be thought patterns that you need to get rid of. Hallelujah. And so this morning, as we're praying and as we're seeking God, we're going to be praying and you're going to be praying and you're going to say, Lord God, show me where, where I need to be circumcised. Show me where I need, where, where you, what you want to cut out in my life. Cut out in my life. This is what you're going to pray right now. This is what I want you to pray. Will somebody write that in the, in the chat room? And this is, this is really a time of introspec introspection. We're not, we're not, um, we're not going to, um, it's a time of introspection. And I want you to press in just a little bit. Just a little bit, just pressing. You're going to say, Lord, show me 
where, what needs to be cut in my life. And I want you to pray this prayer seriously. I want you to pray. They had to be circumcised. They had to, they had to be purified. They had to be consecrated back unto God. And so God needed to cut their flesh. And the flesh is, is, is cutting of the flesh is a symbolic of the sinful nature, our fleshy desires. God cut that off so that when they stepped into the promised land, they were stepping in, in covenant. They were stepping in as the people of God. And I hope you can understand this. I hope I'm not speaking too fast and I hope I'm not going too deep, but I'm trying to get you to just to see things from a spiritual standpoint. And so we're going to pray this right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I just want you to pray. Show me where I need to be cut in my life. Show me. And I want you to really press in. This, this moment that we're praying and we're pressing in, we're, 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 we're taking a journey. We've not, we've, we, we're at the entranceway of the, of the land of Canaan, but we've not crossed over into it yet. God did the miracle. He parted the sea. Our enemies now is afraid because we repented this morning. We've confessed our sins to the Lord. And so now we're in right standing with God. Praise God. And now we're asking God, Lord God, show me the, show me the things in my life that must change. Show me the things inside of my life that I must deal with in order so that I might, I might step into, I might remain in covenant with you. And there might be some things that you, um, that the Lord might have been speaking to you about for the last couple of days, last couple of weeks, last couple of months, last couple of years that he's been, he's been telling you about that he wants you to do. Uh, and you, you've not, maybe you're on the fence about those things. You've not truly given them up over to God. So this morning, this morning, you're asking God about those things. You're talking to God about that thing. Maybe the Lord is, is told you, you need to shut off show, uh, social media for a bit. Maybe the Lord has told you, you need to cut the TV out for a bit and just uh, quiet yourself. Maybe the Lord has told you, I want you to start studying a certain thing to better yourself. And you've re resisted it. I don't, I don't know what it is that, that the, the area of cutting that God, the area of cutting in your life. But there, there might be an area in which God is like, I, I want you to start cutting things out. Maybe there's a friendship you've had for years. You've been friends with this person, but this friendship leads you to places that are un ungodly. The, these friendships produce no righteousness. There, there's something about biblical friendships. When you get around the people of God, when you're in covenant with good people, they grow you. David and Jonathan had a covenant relationship with, with one another. They had a healthy soul tie. There's such thing as a healthy soul tie. David and, and Jonathan's soul was knit, but when they were together, they were better for each other. They encouraged each other in the Lord. They looked out for one another. There, there are friendships that God will put in your life that is completely divine, that causes you to go to the next place in your walk with Christ. Hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And so I want you to pray. I don't know what those things are. I'm just throwing things out that I know are normal things. Maybe it's a relationship. You've been dating a person for so long and you know that person is not, it's not for you, but you, but you're comfortable. God is like, I need you to, I need you to circumcise, cut the flesh, cut the relationship off. What I have for you is better. And what I love about the story is that the, the it was it was called the mountain of foreskin. It's pretty funny, but when they cut the flesh, it, it, it's a picture of it was left over there, so I can enter here. Like it was left over there, so I could step into what God has for me. It's a beautiful picture of letting go of the things in our life that are not healthy, that are not good, so that we can obtain what God has. So you're praying right now, and I want you to press in. Hallelujah. Press in right now. We're going to pray. Lord, show me. Lord, show me. Lord God, we come before you, Lord God. Lord God, show me. And as I was even teaching this to you, I'll just uh, say this. Uh, just be careful. But the Lord was bringing things to my mind that I have to relearn, things that I have to do. He was bringing these thoughts to my soul. 
So I want you to pray. We're praying right now. We're praying. We're going to end at 7 today. I'm not going to go to 9. But I want you to pray. Humble yourself before God. Just pray. Lord God, show me what needs to be cut. God, reveal to me. Oh God, we come before you, Lord God. Lord God, today, Lord God, I thank you, Lord God, and I praise you, Lord. You're worthy, Lord God. You're worthy of all the glory. You're worthy of all the honor. Where, where we need to be circumcised, Lord God. Circumcise our hearts, God. Lord God, we want new hearts. We want a new heart, Lord God, this morning. Lord God, circumcise the, the, the foreskins of our heart, God. Circumcise our soul. Oh, Lord, forgive us, Lord God. Forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for resisting you, Lord God. Today we're going back. Today we're going back, Lord God. Today we're choosing, Lord God. We're choosing, Lord God, to do things the way you want us to. Circumcision was such an intimate thing. I want you to understand that these men, these men are being circumcised as, as an adult. And usually circumcision now, it happens, you know, when the child is born, they cut the foreskin of the child in the hospital. But these are adult men who had to be cut by Joshua. Joshua made flint knives so that the people can be circumcised. And then... Joshua had to go to the intimate place, the most intimate place of a person in order to deal with the, the issues. Circumcision is when God goes to the most intimate places of your life, the deep places inside of you, the, the places where, where, where people don't see, the places where you have to unveil yourself before God. It's really, it's really a, an act of humility when you know, even when you go to the doctor and the doctor makes you take off your clothes, there's this, mm, you feel so, oh my gosh, I, I don't want, you know, I hate it when, when the doctor makes me take off my clothes in order to, to, to look at me. I know I need the professional advice and the opinion and I, I don't want the problem to persist, right? We don't want the problem, but at the same time, we don't want to be exposed, and there's a humility in coming to God where God, where you're unveiling your heart and God is now seeing or allowing you to see what needs to change. It's really, it's really humbling to be exposed when you're, when you're exposed before God, man, it's like, wow, like it's humbling. It's, there's a brokenness. There's a, there's a, there's a, oh my gosh, I, I don't want to be seen this way but unless you're seen this way you can't get the healing right you go to the doctor unless the doctor looks at the parts that you don't want looked at you won't get the counsel that you need you won't get the medication that you need you won't get what you're supposed to get in order to heal right so when we're praying these prayers we're allowing god into intimate spaces we're allowing god into intimate places we're allowing God to look at us uncovered. That's what we're doing. That's what we're seeking God. We're allowing God to, to look at us uncovered. It's really hard. It's really difficult. But that's what we're doing this morning. So... I want you to take this time, and this is why I'm taking my time. It's not because um, I could rush this moment, but I don't want to rush this moment because there's some things you need to talk to God about. You need to address in the spirit. You need to address with your dad. Your your father is now. You know, I remember when my kids were young and they would they would get dirty. You know how little kids, toddlers, they just dirty themselves up. They you know they they can be just real dirty. Just spill food all over their faces, their clothes. 
and they're a mess and you look at that child and then you got to take that child in the bathroom and you take off their clothes and you got to bathe them sometimes they don't even want to be bathed they, they're comfortable in their mess and you're fighting with the child and then you got to wash the child and then they're squirming and they're running away and you got to put lotion on the child and you got to put the child's clothes on and it's a whole ordeal and in your mind you know the child needs a bath right like you're like this kid needs a bath but they're fighting and you're laughing because you understand that the child doesn't understand the nature in which how how bad they've soiled themselves right and and sometimes that's that's us with god god grabs us and he's like you need a bath and we're squirming and we're fighting in the hands of god and god is like i i need to i need to take off your clothes i need to put you in water you're fighting you're resisting you're fighting you're resisting you finally you wash the child and then then i need to clothe you in new garments righteous garments the child is resisting that too. You're trying to put the pamper on the child. The child is fighting you. What should have taken five minutes turns into 15, 20 minutes. And then you put the clothes on the child. You put the lotion. You put the powder. You put the whatever on the child. And the child the child is fine now. This, this is what God is doing this morning with you. He's taking you in his hands. He's saying, I need to wash you. I need to cleanse you. And I need to clothe you. The garments you were wearing before were dirty. You soiled yourself. You, you, you spilled. There's some things that were spilled on you through life. There were some things that, that, that has come upon you and I need to change your clothes. And I need you to get, I need to get you ready. Ready for what you need. Ready to, to, to go into the place that I have for you. And so this morning, I really want you to pray. And I want, you to, I want you to allow God to go into intimate spaces. And I want you to press in. So let's just take five more minutes. And I want you to really pray. Really pray. Say, Lord God, today I come before you. And I enter in. Lord God, I, I come before you, Lord God, unveiled. We come before you, Lord God, exposed, Lord God. Today we come before you, Lord God, allowing you, Lord God, to see, Lord God, our, our lives, the things that are hidden, hidden to other people, Lord God, even hidden to us, Lord God. And this morning, Lord God, we are crying out to you, Lord God, for, for hearts, Lord God, that are pure. We understand that we are your covenant people and that we cannot step into what you have for us unless we are circumcised in our flesh, in our hearts, God. And today we're asking, oh, Father God, that you would break off that which, Lord God, has held us in bondage, Lord God. Today, Lord God, we want no claim to the flesh. We want no claim to an independent life, a life without you. Today, this morning, Lord God, we are asking, oh Father God, for you, Lord God, to go into the intimate places of our lives, the lives in which, oh Father, the places in which no one sees, no one knows, oh Father God. And we're asking for purity. We're asking that you would wash us. Good morning, um, Akash. We're asking you, oh Father God, that you would cleanse us, oh Father God. I'm asking you, oh Father God, that you would wash us, oh Father God. I'm asking, Lord God, today, Lord God. We want, Lord God, to be freed. Lord God, we are sorry, Lord God. We ask that you would cleanse us, oh Father God. Forgive us for the hardness of our hearts. Forgive us, oh Father God, for choosing to do things our own way. Forgive us for resisting your wise counsel, oh Father God. For Forgive us, oh Father God, today, this morning, Lord God, we're asking for a heart alignment. We're asking, Lord God, that you would align us in the spirit. Today, we've come, Lord God, so that our lives might be aligned to the word of God, that our lives might be aligned to the truth of God, that our lives might be aligned, Lord God, to the will of God. Today, this morning, oh Father God, we're coming, Lord God, and we're asking, Lord God, now that you, Lord God, would transform us, Lord God, that you would make us more like you. Today, we humbly come, Lord God. Today, we give up, Lord God, our resistance, Lord God. We give up our way, Lord God. We're willing to learn, oh Father God. We're willing to learn how to war correctly. We're willing to learn how to fight, oh Father God. We're willing, Lord God, to learn how to take Jericho. We're willing to learn, Lord God, how to fight, Lord God, not in our human strength, not in our human wisdom, not in our human mind. We're willing to do what you say. We're willing to wait on you. We're willing, Lord God, to see the world as you see it, not the way we see it. We're willing, Lord God, to understand and perceive the way you perceive, Lord God, not the way our human wisdom does. Lord God, today, Lord God, we, we, we throw aside 
all of our baggage, Lord God. Today, we're, we're asking, oh, Father God, for your perspective, your heart, your mind, your will, your understanding, Lord God. We understand that your ways are not our ways, and your thoughts are not our ways. As high as the heavens are above the earth, Lord God, so your ways are, are high. And, and as far as the east is from the west, Lord God, so your, your, your thoughts, Lord God. Lord God, this morning, Lord God, we understand that you are so complex you are so far beyond us that we could not even grasp just a, a little bit Lord God of, of what you see and that we are in danger when we think we know better than you when we think we can do life better than you when we think we are better oh God Lord today today we come in humility Lord God we come in humility we come in humility and we ask, oh, Father God, you would circumcise us, Lord God, in the secret place, the hidden place, Lord God, where there are things that displease you, that you would cut them out of our lives. Today we come before you, Lord God, as those men, Lord God, had to come before Joshua, Lord God, in the valley, Lord God. Those men had to be exposed, Lord God, in order to be in covenant. Those men had to be exposed in order to be in covenant. Today, Lord God, we, we come, Lord God, to be exposed in your presence, Lord God, not by man, but by your spirit, Lord, so that we might be in covenant with you, so that we might be in relationship with you, so that we might walk the walk that you have for us, that, you, that we, might, we might do what you've called us to do. Oh God, I thank you, Lord, and I praise you, Father God, and I pray this morning, Lord God, that you may bring us back. Lord God, today we're ready, Lord God. We're ready to listen. We have listening ears, Lord God. Lord God, we, we, have, we have gotten rid of, rid of our hardened heart and we're ready for instruction, Lord God. We're ready this time for instruction. We're willing to be taught. Father, thank you, Lord. And I praise you now, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. So, we're on a journey. We've we've been circumcised. Our hearts been circumcised. I I want to try to um I will try to finish by 7, but if not um I don't know. I already said, but we'll we'll see. So then what was the next step? What what was the next step? The Israelites began to fight battles. Once they were circumcised. Guess what? God led them into war. Oh man, I want you to catch this revelation. They were clean, they were washed, and they were circumcised, and God led them into war. And some of you are thinking, oh, oh no, I don't want to be led into war. No, you don't get it. Listen. God led them into war to fight against everything that was keeping them from his promises. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Hallelujah. Amen. God led them into war in order that they might fight against that which stood against their promise. So they before they even got to the land of um before they even pressed in, they had to they had to fight many wars. And the first war was the war um, in Jericho. And you guys know the story of Jericho. This is very important. Amen. I want you to pay attention to this. This is very important because we're going to pray this prayer. This war of Jericho set the tone for how war was going to be fought for Israel. If you can catch this teaching right now, this will bless your soul. The Jericho war was different than the other wars in that they were not supposed to do anything but to walk around the walls for seven days. You guys know the story. Not say anything. Only the priest will make a noise. And then on the seventh day, they were to do a priestly cry. I mean, excuse me, the, the, the sound of the instruments were to blow. The people were to raise their voice and shout, and the walls would come down. So they walked around seven times, right? This is powerful. 
And what God was teaching them was that the battle was not theirs, it's the Lord's. And that the battle will be fought the way he says it's supposed to be fight. And so there are some battles that we fight where, you know what, guess what? Um, we don't say anything, God does the work. We just obey the instruction. And then there are other battles where God is like, okay, now I want you to pick up the sword and fight. And so this, this was an act of humility and surrender for the people of Israel. They were, uh, they were surrounding a wall that could not be broken down. They had enemies on them on all, all over and the people that they were fighting against were secure in their position. They were secure. They, they thought, you know what, we're on the wall. They made fun of the people of Israel as they, they, they camped around until that seventh day came. Hmm. Now that you have repented, God is going to give you strategy to fight against the things that stop you from stepping into what God has for you. Are you listening to me? I, I don't know if you, you're receiving the word of the Lord this morning. Now that you have repented, God is going to give you his way of doing things. Uh, are you guys with me this morning? Can I get a, a thumbs up? Can I get a response in the chat room? If you're with me and the Lord is, and, and you're catching this revelation, you're, you're getting this understanding of what God is teaching right now, God is going to give you His strategy. His strategy is not your strategy. No one in their right mind comes to a war and a wall city and says, I'm going to walk around there and not say anything. But it was, it was the first introduction of war for these people. These, these children, and God was teaching them, the battle is mine, it's not the Lord's. If you do what I say, you will always have victory. So now that we've prayed, you've positioned yourself to hear from God. You've positioned yourself to get wise counsel. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. You've positioned yourself now, hallelujah, to get, to get the understanding, hallelujah, the understanding of what God wants to do. Now you're in, in position to receive divine revelation. So in the next couple of days, God is going to speak to you. And he's going to tell you what to do, how to do it, what to say, not to say. God is going to tell you who to befriend, who not to befriend, who to connect with, who not to connect with. This is what God is about to do in your life. This is what God is going to do in your life right now, in this moment. He's going to give you divine instruction. Hallelujah. And so we're going to pray a very specific prayer, sim simple prayer, before we close out. And this is the prayer you're going to pray. You're going to pray what Samuel prayed. What did Samuel pray? Samuel prayed, Lord, here am I, your servant is listening. That's what Samuel prayed. You remember when he got his first prophetic word? Right? Lord, here am I, your servant is listening. That's all you're going to pray right now. Because now, now we have been prepared. Good morning, Janine and Stephanie. This is what we're going to pray. This is what we're going to seek the Lord. We're going to cry to God. We're going to pray right now. And you're going to say, Lord, your servant. And, uh, and, and you're going to prepare yourself to listen to God today. You're going to have the faith, the expectation in your heart to receive from the Father. This is what you're praying. This is what I want you to press into. And let's pray that to, together. Let's pray it as a family. We are a family with the body of Christ. Some of us go to church together. Some of us don't, but we're praying this prayer right now. Hallelujah. And this is what we're going to pray. We're going to say, Lord, we are listening. Your servant is listening. And let's make it personal because we're not just servants. We're sons. Lord, your son is listening. Lord, your daughter is listening. I'm ready to receive direction now. Father God, we come before you. Lord God, this morning, in full surrender to you. Father God, our, our hands are lifted up. Lord God, we're ready to listen. We understand that the walls that surround the promise that you have for us will only come down if we obey your instructions if we are led by your spirit, if we are led by your truth. And so right now, today, today we come before you, Lord God. We come before you, Lord God, and we pray in Jesus' name that you, O oh God, would lead us, 
that you, O oh God, would direct us. We are open to receive whatever you have to say to us. Now we're going to quiet ourselves. And we're going to listen. And this is hard for some people. We're so used to talking that God can't even talk. He got to speak to us in a dream because we spent the whole time praying and we didn't listen. And let's just be quiet. Let's quiet yourself. And then I want you to listen to what God has to say. And for some of you, God is going to speak to you immediately. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hmm. And that the Lord spoke to you. For some of you, he'll speak to you now. For some of you, he'll speak to you later. And I want this to be the posture of your heart this week. But if the Lord spoke to you this morning and he began to tell you some things that you need to change, the things that he wants you to do, I want you to put a thumbs up in the chat, in the chat room. The Holy Spirit spoke to you this morning. And maybe he spoke to you before I even got to this point, because God is good like that. But I want you to put a thumbs up. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. I'm listening. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Amen, Yolanda. Praise God. God is speaking to you. This is very important. I need you to write whatever the Lord told you down. Write it in a book. Write it in a journal. Write it in a place where you can go back tomorrow and make sure that you're in alignment with the word of God, whatever the Holy Spirit spoke to you. And for some of you, you're going to be working and right in the middle of you typing, the word of the Lord is going to come to you. Some of you, you're going to be walking, hallelujah, and the word of the Lord is going to come right to you. God is telling me some things right now. Amen. Amen, Jeanette. Amen. The Lord is speaking to you. He's, he's talking to you. Don't give up. Amen. Amen. Let's keep listening. We're going to we're going to spend time listening. We got 2 more minutes. Let's just listen. This is beautiful. All of God's children are sitting at his feet right now whether you're driving or or you're sitting or you're preparing for work. All of us are sitting at at dad's feet. We're waiting to hear from dad. We're waiting to hear from our heavenly father. All of his kids. We're sitting we're surrounding our dad this morning. Hallelujah. Just going to wait on dad. We're waiting on the father. We're waiting on the king. We're waiting on the king. Hallelujah. If the Lord is speaking to you, and he just drops something in your spirit, you can put a thumbs up. Amen. Hallelujah, Jada. I'm glad the Lord spoke to you. Mm-hmm. Wow, this is it. This is it. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Lord, you're real. You speak to your children, Lord. You're real. You speak to your children. Lord, I'm thankful. I'm thankful, God. Thank you for allowing us to come into your presence this morning, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you speak to our hearts. We thank you. I just want to encourage you guys, if you don't have a home church, you can visit us. Um, I'm the lead pastor of God's Kingdom Church, Florida, uh, located in Kissimmee, 2131 Parton Settlement Road. 2131 Parton Settlement Road. If you are blessed this morning, would love for you to come and, and just connect with us, connect with our church family. Hallelujah. All right. Well, I hope you have a wonderful day. Be encouraged. Your Father has spoken to you. I want to give you a word of the Lord. You will possess the gates of your enemy. God is going to give you divine strategy. He's going to tell you what to do. And when he speaks to you, obey quickly. Don't run. Don't second guess it. Don't say, was it God? Was it not of God? Is this the Lord? No. You heard from God this morning. You heard from your dad. You heard from your heavenly father who loves you. And he spoke to your heart this morning. And he gave you a word. And he gave you a, Listen, I want you to receive that. The Lord gave you a word this morning. Not my word. I'm talking about what he spoke to your heart about. We, we serve a God who speaks. He speaks to you. You're loved. You're so loved. You're loved with an everlasting love. I, you don't understand the depth of God's love for you. I, I hope that today you have fallen in love with God just a little bit more. Have a blessed day, everyone. Love you guys.